in the first video about the blocking oscillator I did not pay much attention to the materials, only about the transistor, that it had to be a transistor that can handle quite a high voltage on its base. By the way, such a high voltage can also be damped out. For instance, by connecting here in the backcoupling coil a high value resistor that will damp out the, the backcoupling voltage and that will also prevent your transistor from, from breaking down. Uh, in fact, I didn't talk about how the current flows here, the current goes in, goes to the primary, through the primary, then in the collector lead, collector emitter lead, and here it's sent back. This winding, the first winding, uh, has to have not so much turns. When you have too much turns here, there will be a not good uh, voltage ratio between the primary and the secondary. And also was my experience that you could not could not go get to high frequencies. The frequency, of course, uh, depends on all the three coils, it's a resonant system. And um, here you see, for instance, coils that are, in my opinion, usable for such a blocking oscillator. But um, I don't know much about the properties from all these ferrite uh, cores. But ferrite is the ideal material, and that has all to do with the properties and the saturation from the core. When the core gets saturated, uh, there is less uh, a less good um, voltage conversion, and the ferrite material has the property that it doesn't get so quickly saturated. Saturated, and there are color codes about the frequency bands. Green means a certain uh, property from the ferrite, etc., etc. Red. But I don't know much about it. I've also made a blocking oscillator with pins, iron pins, as a core and wound a coil on it. And the experience was that uh, it worked, but the voltage conversion was not very high and the frequency uh, stayed very low. So you can make such an oscillator with an iron pin, but it works but not ideal. Ferrite is the better material. Okay, um, of course you can connect here to the secondary diode and the capacitor to get the DC voltage out. I have to make another experimental circuit about it. I Perhaps when I have time I'm going to do that. But uh, something to take in account is that when you load make a heavy load here on the secondary, it could be that the frequency goes down and also that the oscillation stops. But anyway, uh, this is a quite tough, rough circuit that always works. So I think it's possible to get here a DC voltage out. Of course at um, not so much milliampères. Interesting to see is that the frequency 3376 three, uh, kilohertz has all to do with the voltage and thus with the frequency. For instance, I go now to a higher voltage. Now it is 3 volts and it is 177 kilohertz approximately. Frequency goes down on higher voltages. And also, I have already showed it, the waveform gets more or less chaotic. But, okay, this is the waveform on that frequency. On that lower frequency, 3.2 volts, and the load is still a LED. Frequency can also be changed somewhat by turning the potentiometer want to try to do that now and at the same time look at the scope. I'm turning now the potentiometer. The oscillation stops, but you can see that the waveform changes. It has all to do with the working point 
from the transistor. And that changes when we change the value from the potentiometer. Wish you luck.